Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The following is a very important discussion on uh, with this brother Abdurrahman. He's uh, a brother who has spent about 15 years studying the issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Now, it is very important that you listen to this talk carefully. You listen to this talk carefully and what he's saying and add up all the pieces together. And then it will end on a very special note as he explains who are Ya'juj and Ma'juj, what are their different tribes, what have they done, and what were they doing on the day the Prophet woke up and said, Today, Ya'juj and Ma'juj have put a hole in the wall of Zulqarnayn. So this is what you will get from today's conversation. And so it is uh, very, very uh, interesting and very, very important. And uh, what I have to say is that many of the people who have been studying Ya'juj and Ma'juj have reached the same conclusion that this brother has also reached and then in addition to that he adds more to it more details into it he knows about all the different tribes that were the progeny of Ya'juj and Ma'juj and especially it answers one very important question where the prophet said there will be a, a 99 people from Ya'juj and Ma'juj and one from you and you uh, meaning the people of Ham and Sham, as he will explain, the three sons of Nuh one of them will have more spread population, as you will see. So the first question he's going to answer is who are Ya'juj and Ma'juj? And then he's going to go into the different tribes that they had, where they traveled, what this has to do with the area of where Zulqarnain was in, and then finally, the discussion will be about where the Prophet said today Ya'juj and Ma'juj have put a hole in the wall and he will show you exactly what happened on that particular day because we know that it was uh, which day it was in the Hijri calendar okay we know exactly which day it was and uh, so we know when this event happened and we know what event was happening by some of the children of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. I think I've said enough. Okay, so let's start. Uh, Bismillah walhamdulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ahmaduhu wa usalli ala rasulil kareem. Amma ba'd fa'awudh billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I have a brother today, mashallah. He is from Somalia. He has been studying, even though he lives in the U.S. like me, um, but he has been studying the issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj uh, about 15 years. And uh, so it is very interesting, his research and his understanding on this whole issue. Uh, it's not much different than what Sheikh Imran Hussein or from what other scholars have been saying, but he takes it further back to its uh, original point, you can say. And uh, so that is why I brought him on to, inshallah, explain to us step by step uh, everything that he would like to share with us in regards to the issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So brother, please introduce yourself, your name, and your how much you've studied in the past when it comes to Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And, uh, and then from there, uh, the floor is yours, and you can, inshallah, uh, share with us uh, your research, mashallah. And <coughs> more important, I forgot the main point, is when the night the Prophet woke up, and he said that tonight, today, a hole has been made in the wall of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, he has come to an understanding of the event in that time period of the Prophet where when this was happening and the night in which this happened. And so this is also a very fabulous uh, research point that he has. So Bismillah, brother. If you can uh, introduce you yourself and your history with Ya'juj and Ma'juj as a, as a subject and then take it from there, inshallah. Inshallah, we'll do that. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. 
الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا الحمد لله الذي فاضل السماوات والارض رب العرش العظيم استغفره واشكره واتوب اليه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي وصلى الله على نبي الله حبيب الله رسول الله محمد وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم اما بعد and thank you uh, thank you very much brother umar like you said uh, introduction i have been studying this subject of yajuj and majuj for at least the last 15 years my study began back in 1999 when i read the book written by uh, arthur kessler which he called 13 tribe 13 tribes that book that book actually after i read knowingly since i know a lot of history of Bani israel the history of semitic people i knew something was wrong this kind of subject of yajuj and majuj and also history of so many things they have told us they introduced us so that's where my my study began second of all i'm actually i'm very proud to be an student of sheikh Imr- sheikh imran hussein uh, he's the one who introduced us this subject of yajuj and majuj we'll talk about inshallah ta'ala and so that's where i began my studying it has been extremely very long road and i did uh, i did a lot of reading a lot of studying mostly medieval uh, medieval european historian arab writers arab uh, travelers assyrians greeks byzantine uh, writers or philosophers if you will so this subject has been a lot and the mystery is that as you know it uh, starting very end of life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in medina especially his last 10 years in medina he was talking about more about the jal ya juju ma juj and akhir zaman allah he never did these things in makkah so after the death of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in 632 ad the khulafa rashidin took over and then what happened was starting khalif umar there was a serious or there were a lot of wars between khulafa khulafa rashidin led by umar and the ghazali empire this is where actually i found out a lot of a lot of a lot of yajuj and majuj information hidden from us and one of the reason is that the subject of yajuj and majuj has been discouraged to us starting when actually uh, first of all i'm saying this people seljuk turks were actually good muslims after they became muslims they did a lot of good things for islam they are the one who actually who fought against the crusaders they did a lot of uh, good things for islam in general but also there is another problem with seljuk and that problem was the founder of seljuk uh, sultanate or empire his name is seljuk actually he was a kazari general this is uh, this information i he found it extremely strange general he was a general from the yes. kazari empire okay. yes he was a general in kazari and empire army hmm. and after the fall of <coughs> kazari empire on very beginning of 11th century he left the kazaria with his tribe of turks that time called ugusi ugusi were a tribe that used to live east side of Caucasus mountain especially east side of what we call now like Uzbekistan Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan so after he left that area uh, with his with tribe strangely many people believe that the Seljuk were exposed to Judaism before they became Muslims and you can tell that uh, Seljuk's name uh, Seljuk's son is couple of them names were Israel and Moses. I mean, those are Muslim names when we say that because Israel is Nabi Yaqub alayhi salam. 
But it's really, it's not something that historically Muslims don't call their children, their children or their son is Israel. Also, it's good, although it's a good name in Islam. So that's it just showing you that, uh, it's showing you that they were exposed to Judaism just like Kaisaris were before they became Muslims. So that's where I start history. So the problem came with the Seljuk is that since they took rulership of Muslims on that area. Just to it, just to, for my audience to to uh, kind of like picture this in their mind. The Seljuks come into history, uh, you know, the, after the Umayyads, with the Umayyad Empire. So they're coming into the Muslim after world Abbasid. after the Abbasid Empire about year 700, 800, right? Yes, yes. Seljuk came to the history. So after about 700 years of Hijra, give and take, uh, around that time, this is when uh, the Seljuks are becoming Muslim. And yes, you are yes. Seljuks also were aware of Judaism, just as the Khazari empires was aware of is uh, Judaism. And they were also probably aware of, you know, Christianity and Islam. And then they accepted uh, Judaism. But you're saying the Seljuks, and because the Seljuk founder was a general of the Khazari empire, they were already aware of Judaism. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, Kaisaris did not only aware of Judaism, they became Jurais themselves on 740. 740. So basically, yes, uh, 740 AD, European uh, calendar, they became fully Jurais, although originally they were Satian or Turkish tribes. Uh, so basically, Seljuk Empire or the father of Seljuk, like I said, very end of uh, 10th century, they left the Khazaria on their way to Muslim land. So that's where I found them, all this information. And this information is publicly available. Anybody can read. If you go to Arthur Kessler's 13 tribes, it's actually first or second chapter, you can find this information, that Seljuk, Seljuks were actually uh, originally part of Khazar Empire, and their top people were journalists in Khazar Army. So the, the importance the, of this is also, the Seljuks is how the Ottoman Empire came into existence, right? So yes, yes. Seljuk Uthmani, basically the Uthmani branch of the Seljuks is what yes. created the Ottoman Empire. So, yes, uh, Ottoman Empire came after Seljuk, they were related. But the reason I'm bringing this is that like you said, Seljuks, in my opinion, were, they were good Muslims, but they also discouraged the idea of studying and learning Yajuj Majuj because originally, like so many Turkic tribes, they were a part of Yajuj Majuj. And remember, 90% of Turkic tribes who were originally Yajuj Majuj became Muslim. So there's no problem with that. Same thing as on European side, 95% of European Yajuj Majuj, also they became Christians. Mm. And also, there is, uh, although there, there were very powerful leaders and rulers of that time, like only like, couple, uh, like three to five percent of original Yajuj Majuj became Jewish too. They became Jewish. Also, although they were not biologically from Israel, but they became Jewish. So, that's how things, so actually this, the current history from when Seljuk overtook the Abbasid uh, Khilafite or Abbasid Khilafite, since that was like 10th, uh, 11th century, from that on up to this day, we live in under the rulership of Yajuj and Majuj, both sides on anywhere you go. So that's where I found out and then since I was searching, like I said, although I get so many information from Sheikh Hussein, I expanded Sheikh Hussein's theory of Khazar Empire, where one who broke the uh, the barrier built by Rahimullah Dhul Gharnayn. Hmm. But uh, Sheikh Hussein did not, did not have this information. I found this information actually accidentally while I was searching the information of Yajuj Majuj, and inshallah. Uh, if you if you and your uh, viewer is ready, I can go ahead and present my presentation. 
Absolutely. It's Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is what Sheikh Imran was saying once. He wants us to take what he gave and to take it further. You know, this is this is this is what he wants. So after the flood of Nuh wasalam, divided the known earth to his three sons. Yes, Ham, Sam, and Yafis. Uh, and then Yafis was given the Caucasus, Europe, and North, Northeast Asia, and Ham, Africa, and Sham, Middle East. Yes, this is the first one. As you can see, this is the legit information. We have all the sources of, of even early Muslims. As you can see, Nibbar of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Yajuju, Majuju are not animal, they are not jinn, they are not some kind of freaky, and, you know, alien. They are actually human beings that from the, th the third son of Nabi Nuh, as you can see in my screen over here. Hmm. That name is Jabed in Latin and English, Arabic Yafiz. Yafiz. So hmm. at the time of Prophet Nuh, alayhi salam, he defined his son is, like you said, to the known world at that time. So always Europe, as you can see, Caucasus areas and east side of Caucasus is the bay. You know, uh, the Eurasian is the bay area. All of these areas he divided and he gave to the offspring and descendant of Jabed. Of course, the Middle East uh, Shemitic people and Africa Hamitic. Hmm. Okay, very nice. So there is no, there is no doubt about it that yeah, this is agreed upon by Christians and Muslims for the most part. What exactly, you exactly. So yes. there is no, there is no reason to doubt about it that the Ajuju Majuj are from Jabet, and this is their original homeland. You can see that every Ajuju Majuj tribe that even recent or even okay, so yeah, I see under the Black Sea you have Magog. Yes, Magog is a is a. It's a majuj. And just, just for my audience's sake, I want to mention that uh, the brother has studied every tribe of Europe almost, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you're going to see. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, to let's see your viewers and, you, and yourself too that I have been studying every major European, Caucasus, Eurasian, uh, Mongol, uh, 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 Oriental. And Eastern tribes that even lived that even lived in last the two thousand years. So I'm going to explain to you. Every time you hear Yajuju Majuj tribe, it's actually the uh, offspring or descendant of Yavis. And usually, what what happened was there were also some Europeans or Caucasian or Asians that from another son of Yavis, Yavis. But actually, Yajuju Maju took over the population wise. So I can tell you that today, all the Yav, all, all the children and offspring of Yavis, more than seven, more than seventy-five percent are actually Yajuju Maju. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next. Oh, slide, so inshallah. that answers the question about the Prophet saying the majority of the population will be Yajuj and Maju. Yes, yes, and yes. And maybe yes. in the future wars that will even make it more so. Yes, world. and I also I study. Know. I also study every hadith of Rabbi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking about Yajuj Majuj. That had the hadith of nine nine. But when Hadith Sukhut, we go another time. It's a numerical. Yajuj Majuj are actually uh, the current human being. Let's say African people, all of all black races, African are one billion. Arabs like half million everywhere. All other Semitics like fifteen, no more than fifteen. And I mean, half Indian, I mean, I will say that 70% 70, 70 of world population today are Yajuju Majuj. And I can easily prove you if somebody wants this information. But uh, that's not what I'm going to do today. Today my, okay. Okay. today, my subject is to prove that the case that Empire and Gog Turks were actually one of the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talk about, he saw them, they are the one who broke the damn uh, barrier wall, wall yeah. that built by the Lord. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do some more uh, introduction more, then we'll go to the, inshallah, to the uh, to the base. Okay, in first, as you can see over here, in first 3,000 years of history, Ham is descendant, were Hamitic people, were rulers of the earth, starting Nimrud, Nimrud, 
Namrud was Hamitic. His full name was Namrud. Namrud bin Kanaan bin Ham bin Nuh. You can see that. Mm -hmm. And also Egyptian as well, also Hamitic too, because the name Misri, Misr, is another son of Noah, Noah. Just like mm -hmm. Somalis and Ethiopian called Kush bin Ham, uh, Egyptians were called themselves Misr bin Ham. Also, the Indians, the, uh, the, the Ravidian Indians, I'm talking about Southern India, they were also related to ancient Hamitic. They were Hamadi people. Their name was uh, Hindi bin Ham. So they were related. You can see when you see Barber people, North Africa, ancient Egyptians, maybe in some sort of Somali and Ethiopia now, you can see that they're related to Indians. So all these were Hamitic people, and these all were original rulers of Erte after the flood. And those light skin or Caucasian or they call Aryan Indians, they became later. I will show you, inshallah. So inshallah, first 3,000 years, the Hamitic people ruled the Erte. And then <clears throat> by the time of, I'll say, end of Pharaoh, by the time of Israel, the Semitic people started uh, the, in the, their turn as the ruling power in the world. And it started Israelites, Elamites. Elamites were ancient so the, Iranian so people. People in basically from Ham, meaning people in Af Africa ruled the world in the first phase. Yes, yes, yes. And the, then the Middle East area ruled the world. Yes, the Most Middle East ruled Bani Israel. Yes, the Middle East were the second people that ruled uh, ruled the world too. Starting Israelites, Elamites, Assyrians, such as Babylonians, all the way to Abbasid Caliphate, ended in 12th century by Seljuk Turks. You can see over here, starting 10th century up to now all the way to the end of the world until Nebi, until Rasulullah Isa comes back is the time of Yajuju Majuj. So this all this information I also found accidentally. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the rulership of the earth on three steps. First were Hamitic people, then Semitic people, and then all the way to the end it's gonna be Yajuju Majuj. And Allah even told us subhanahu wa ta'ala this in Surah Al Kafa at the end of Ayah in Surah Al Kafa of uh, of uh, the story of Yajuj and Majuj, very end, Allah says, Subhanahu wa Taala, and when Allah, uh, when Allah, uh, when Allah, uh, Allah's command came, He will destroy the, the the barrier, and then after that one, you're gonna see Yajuj and Majuj basically crawling one each other. That means one empire occupy everything; it falls. Then another one will come, another one will come until the Isa comes back. So one group so, after another group of the same people. Yes, same group. So starting from 10th century, we live in Yajuj or Majuj times. So for example, you know, the British came, then the Americans came, then, you know. Exactly, exactly. And all of those, I can show you their connection to Yajuj or Majuj. Even yeah. the Yajuj tribe that will attack Prophet Sadr Isa alayhi salam, I found out who they are now, and it will be amazing. So let me continue with them. Okay, so after that, after... Uh, like let's say like uh, time of alayhi salam Nabiullah Dawood or as they call it the King David in the West, his time the Sitians show up actually in the Caucasus area. So Sitians were a first organized nation of Yajuj Majuj. According to Greek historian Herodotus, the Sitians were the most powerful tribes of Yajuj Majuj. He also described them as having red hair. Well built. Remember Hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, Sallam, he yes, told yes, us, yes. You know uh, the description of Yajuj Majuj. It's right here. History matches one what our Prophet said. Mashallah. Mm. Uh, they were okay with the wild beast like. Mm. Their homeland was in the Caucasus. You know this name Caucasus. Actually, it comes from what they call it. Another name of Yajuj Majuj which was Caucasus. It it called. Go Hassan. Go Hassan, it's a it's a it's a Yajuj. Go go, you know, Gog and Magog are Yajuj okay, yes, yes, in Gog Latin. Okay. So this yeah. name, even Caucasus, that's why they call it uh, Caucasus, the cradle of Europeans, because okay. most okay. Europeans even live there actually with the Caucasian part of Yajuj Majuj. So uh, this is their homeland, 
Caucasus, Northern Europe, Eurasia, and Estebe, all the way from Pacific, Eurasia and Estebe, all the way from Pacific, Northern Mongolia, Northern Manchuria, all the way to the Ayub River, west side of, Bla of, the, of the Black Sea. So that's their original homeland. In fact, in fact, their mummified bodies were discovered in the Tarim Basin in present day Xiang, China. Oh, yeah, wow. you can watch, you, you can check the documentary YouTube or everywhere. Like 2000 years ago, they found a mummified of these people with red hair, European like people. Actually, even their clothing were very close to current traditional clothes whereby it's Scots people, you know, the Northern British Isle of evil, it's called them, since they were Celtic. And Celtic is originally from Saitia, Black Sea. Every, the one big thing you can always recognize the Ajiju Majuj is that they came from always Northern Caucasus, Black Sea, and uh, Caspian area. Hmm. Move, moving on. This map, this map is showing city and homeland. As okay. you can see, oh, oh, yes, as you can see over here, this is the Black Sea, this is the Caspian Sea, hmm. and uh, this is Kazakhstan. This is actually what they call it, Eurasian Steppe. You know, if you go to the uh, to the right over here, it's Pacific Ocean, Northern Mongolia, Northern uh, Manchuria, Southern Russia right now, and all the way to the west where actually you can see over here, where it's Ukraine now, you go all of these. So this is Saitia. This tribe also called Sarmatia, so, or the land is Sarmatia, but they were Sarma and Sarmatians were also another part of Yajuju Majuj. So you can see all of this. This is the land of Yajuju Majuj. And also this red over here, it's supposed to be Barti and Bershian. But see, Bershia always contains, always were uh, different tribes, different stuff. But the, the one they have the name Bershian and Bertia, were Yajuju Majuj because the original Elamites, Elamites were Semitic people, they offer rhyme by the Persians. And then later on, the Medes Empire, who were native to this area, very related to what we call. And yeah, the Medes is basically Zulkar name, right? So from Medes, you mean. They, they, they count of it because the Medes were very related to Kurdish people right now. So this Medes overtook all the Yajuju Majuj tribes. Uh, expel all of the Yajuju, Yajuju tribes, but their name, Barti and Bershia, is stuck with Iran. That's why they always call the Iranic language, Iranic people. Every time you hear Iranic people or Iranic language, it's actually Yajuju Majuj. That's what they're talking about. So that's the original homeland of Sitians. And remember, to the east, there were Turkic tribes, another tribe of Yajuju Majuj. And this is Uralic tribes. Uh, Uralic tribes, we can say now Finnish, Hungarians, all of this is the land of Yajuju Majuj. And remember that the Roman Empire were not part of Yajuju Majuj. Romans and Greeks and another people used to live in, in, in Spain or Iberia, I, Iberian, what they call it, Spain right. and Portugal, were not part of Yajuju Majuj. But they were actually overtaken by Yajuju Majuj. As you can remember what they call it, barbarians, you know, Germanic tribes. The, the Hans will, will actually will become the history in short. The Hans, the gods, the Vandalis, all of these people were a Yajuju Majuj, and all of them were a part of original Sitia, Sitianis, and they move from here. This is where they do their attack. We're okay, so one thing that I want clarity on uh, in this map is, so Iran, present day Iran, is that Yajuju Majuj or no? Is that Faris? Is Faris? Yeah, really Persia uh, necessarily Iran is one of the least countries you can find the people of Yajuju Majuj. Do you know those seven nuclear powers in the world is starting United States and Russia, all of all the way to Israel, North Korea, China, uh, Pakistan, and India, uh, Great Britain, uh, France, all nine all declared nuclear powers are actually Yajuju Majuj. So the more the more wide they are. Uh, including China, they are more majority of Yajuju Majuj. I'm going to come to history. The reason I say it, large majority of Pakistanis are originally Yajuju Majuj tribes and Indians. We'll show you, inshallah ta'ala. So this is the map. And now this is the depiction 
of or how they look like Sitians. As you can see over here, they got a blonde hair, red hair. That's very important the description given by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right. And right. something they all share of them is that they were extremely good horse riding people. Everything mm -hmm. they the extremely horse riding people. All the Istabai people you uh, knew how to ride horse well. And actually, and history they even say that this area of Caucasus uh, Mountain, all the way to uh, Eastern Istabe, is where they first they domesticated the horses. So let's move on. Okay, the city and it's, this is the real history by historian. Uh, city and it's had red hair, that's why they were called the Aryan. Many European oh. Turkish and Istabe tribes trace their ancestors to city and it's, since they were the largest the Ajuju Majuju tribes. So you can see this, this is what they look like, although, although this cartoonish, but it's a historical fact. Okay, mm. moving on. This is the, uh, Omar, I think you know more than I do uh, uh, this ayah. The reason I'm bringing is this, uh, uh, is that because this is the description of where Yajuju Majuju Rahimallahu Alayhi build, uh, built the, the, the dam barrier, the wall barrier. Mm. So, as you can see, he said, bring me blocks of iron. Mm -hmm. Then when he had filled out the gap between the two mountains, remember, the main description of the uh, wall is that there are two mountains, two shells of mountain and between them. And underneath that and under that on the ground, there is supposed to be river running. This is the before we describe the dam, but this is the description. So two mountains between them, Runs by river. How do we know Quran from Quran? There is supposed to be river, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told and said, after he after after he bored the iron and he built the iron wall, and then he he said, bring me molten copper to bore over it. So the reason he brought the copper uh, molten copper was to protect the iron in order not to rust. So he's protecting iron from rust. This yeah. is this information in Even the Quran. Even today, they put iron, uh, copper on iron to protect it from rust. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, alhamdulillah, I used to be. I, I, I know a lot of um, metallic, you know, metallurgy and welding. So this was very easy for me. First time I learned this, I, I said, this is has to be either in the lake or in water. Otherwise, there is no reason he need to use cover. So, mashallah, I found out the real barrier and where it was built. Okay, so uh, back to uh, and CTN, okay, CTN, okay. So I also found out by the time the Lugarin built the barrier, what, uh, the, the people who lived there, what kind of people they were. Actually historical, all the way to 100 AD, that area since the Prophet Nuh salam, or uh, not really, but like maybe a couple hundred years after the Prophet Nuh, that, that area was lived by Sitians. And Sitians, like we, uh, like we described, are the people who Yajuju Majud. So Sitians, uh, like, uh, rather, Sitia is where uh, the Lugarnain built his barrier wall in order to block them. The barrier wall was used to iron and cover as building materials. Iron was for the protection of the barrier. See, iron is very strong element, metallic element, nobody can break it, you know, if, although this wall has miracle, miracle, miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it. That's why they're no, they, were not, they were not able to uh, break out, you know, or destroy. So, okay, but the cover was to protect the iron from rust because the barrier was built on top of a river called Tereg. I'm going to show you. The Tereg River is a river that runs gorges or the valley between two cliffs of mountain. That's called Tereg River. Okay. Its name is Tereg. The name is Hanis. I'm going to show you after, after city and it's the Hanis, where they are the one who used to occupy that area, but they were not able to broke the barrier. So 
is the, is the, is the Hans language. And up to this day, the name Treg is actually Hungarian language. So you can see people of Hungary, they are from Hans and Magyaris, both of them. Yajuju, Majuju. Mm -hmm. So, and the location is the Darial base, no doubt about it. There is no any other world. It's not even, even that. I studied the geography of doing a mountain range. I studied the geography of the world anywhere, any country, especially the mountain range. There is no any other mountain range where there is river runs between two cliffs of mountain, very narrow pass, and each side is at least 700 miles on both sides. So mm -hmm. this makes sense. This is the real reason. For example, if you go to Himalaya, a very large mountain range, but there are so many passes you can go. You can just walk like five miles and you're going to have pass. If you go uh, northern Italy or Italy or, you know, that mountain range, you can go anywhere and just a pass or you can go in the river and go behind it. Actually, one of the early African journals called Hannibal, he did that. That's why he invaded Rome. Okay, what about Norwegian and Mount Rangian? They're very short, like 40 miles. This is how Mohammed Bate also conquered uh, Istanbul. He went around the mountain. Yes, so yes. you're saying there is a dam, and then after that, there's 700 miles of yeah, mountains yes. on both sides. On mountain range. On mountain so it range. makes sense to close this gap, and then you would have a natural kind of like... Yes, uh, yes, yes, a natural barrier. Yeah. Yeah, Caucasus Mountain. You see, if you go, if you go to the west, it's the Black Sea, and even Caucasus Mountain runs into the black, into bed bedrock of the Black Sea like seven miles. So there is no way nobody could, could break it. Also, into the east, the, the mountain range runs to the Caspian Sea, to the old to the ground, you know, bedrock of the ground, like a couple miles deep. What happened was, some some Muslims say. The wall was derbent. Okay, let me give you a clear reason it was not derbent. By the time the Lugarnayan Rahimallah who built the wall, the Caspian Sea, sea water level was extremely high. So oh. the water were almost higher in the, the mountain. So then after Persian Empire on first century AD, the water receded and there was, it became a little maybe they can squeeze, but actually, the the Medes Empire or British Empire, they built a series of walls that area. Yeah, I was also of the opinion, but you know, I could never say 100%. I was of the opinion that it has to be the Darbant wall or the wall of Gorgon, which is on the other side of the... Uh, yes, Gorgon. yes. So but the this, reason is that... Now that you uh, mentioned this, uh, and when, you, when we were talking on the phone earlier, uh, a few days ago, when you mentioned this, this does make more sense especially considering the 700 mile range of mountains on both sides, how that really becomes a barrier. Uh, yes, yes. So basically, basically in Durban or east side of uh, Caspian Sea, the description of Allah give us subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Kafi does not, does not fit this kind of uh, Durban because it has to be Sadain, two mountain range. There is none. If you take this idea, it's one side, it's, it's a sea, and it's, 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 a, it's a mountain. So it doesn't fit. Also, a red man, it's not. There's no way it could be. Only logically, and if you know geographically, this is the only thing that makes sense. You see, when Hans, Hans, Hans were, like I said, he used to occupy that land. And since uh, the Lugarnain blocked them with their four, uh, forefathers of uh, and city, and it's, going toward the, uh, toward the Arabia or Holy Land, he couldn't broke the dam. That's why he go to the, he, that's why he went to the north and occupy Europe and attack Roman Empire from the north. So that's where it was. And it's 100% it's a Darial Bass. So let's move on. Darial Bass, it's, it's located on the border crossing between Russia and Georgia on the east side of Monte Kesbegi. See the map, let's see the map. Okay, here's the map. As you can see, this is the, uh, 
Dari El Bas, a border between northern Russia, uh, excuse me, southern Russia and northern Georgia. Also, although, I mean, I study a lot of geographical areas, so I can name actually every country on earth, what language they speak and where they originate. So I spent a lot, I spent a lot of time on learning this. So this is the land of originally Scythia, and then it became Kaiser, it became Gog Turkish, which we're gonna go about it. Yeah. It became uh, Gog Turkis, and then it became Kaiseris. This is where the Muslims were fighting Kaiseris for at least 300 years, because the, the Khulafa Rashidun and, and Umayyad and Abbasid, they had the correct translation of Hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, describing them Yajiju Majiju. They knew who were these people were. So they were always fighting and they knew, they never lost it. But once they, like I mentioned in, in, uh, in the, at the beginning of my program, once they said Jew took over Islam, they, they discouraged learning in the Yajiju Majuj. So this is the wall, as you can see, there is only narrow bus over here. That's where the Dulgarnain blocked it. Otherwise, Yajuj were this land. If they want to go and, re and he blocked them from coming to Holy Land or Arabia, and the people who actually asked Dul Qarnayn uh, to block them were Georgians. You see, this is where Sheikh Hussein got right. The Georgian language has no relative, has no living relative language up to this now. Everybody over here, it's this is Turkic language. All of these Turkic language, languages, even now Turkey, since it used to be in Byzantium, and this is Arabic, and this is Persian, Iranic. Iranic, so an Armenian language is close to, to Iranian language than anyway also. So the Georgian are the one who had difficulty understanding what Dulgarni was saying. So it's clean and they were actually a very weak community since very early on. They always were bullied this area. So they were very, very poor, very rather very weak people that were bullied or raised by Yajuju Majuj. So that's where the Rahimallah built a barrier. As you can see, there, there is no way they could cross this. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he said, I remember ayat the Quran, uh, the ayat al Quran, A'udhu billahi min al-shayda rajim, wa haramna ala qariyatin ahlaknaha, wa haramna, wa haramna qariyatin ahlakna annahum la yarji'un. Yes, yes. Ahlakna annahum la yarji'un, hatta idha yufati'a yajuj wa majuj wa kullu min al-hadab yansilun. Very, okay, this is where I want to show you. Then Hadim Yansilun, all the rivers run from this area down toward the south, Holy Land, Arabia. So mm -hmm. basically Allah telling us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Juju Majuj will be coming from this area to the north, to the south, because this is Hadim. This is elevation area, and lowland Arabia and Holy Land is actually lowland. Even Nile River from Africa runs toward the Holy Land. You can see that it 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 goes uh, it goes all the way to the Mediterranean Sea, uh, just very close to Holy Land. So Allah, so that will come ayah, to the Allah, north to the south is what. Yes, how you're, yes, yes. Okay. So so this is this is the elevated area and this is the uh, low down areas. So Yajuju Majuju were coming from north. This is that's the meaning of an ayah. And also the people who will be bringing Ben Israel that area that area. Sheikh Hussein was right. It's Jerusalem. And the people who lost that area and who will never come back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unless he clears the Yajuj Majuj at Ben Israel. And the people, Allah is telling us, basically, it's a blind sight. You can see this. The, Allah is telling us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can recognize the Yajuj Majuj when they brought back Ben Israel into the Holy Land. So who brought back Ben Israel? They are at the British Empire with the Kaiser Ashkenaz. And I'm going to show you all of them were a part of Yajiju Majuj. Sadaqallahu al al Adim. Move on. This is the close geographical or close in of uh, Daryal Bas. Okay. This is the, actually the Bas. This area is the Bas. Soviet Union, when Georgia was part of Soviet, Soviet Union, they built, they built a military highway. So this highway called, this is this the, you know, J3 or whatever that name. So, like I said, the river, there is river runs through the barrier and that river called Tarek. And if you go Google translation and type Tarek, 
it's a Hungarian language, it says Belize. So Hans were there before. And there's another river called Hode River. This Hode River actually, some Indians name it's a Hode because I'll show you the light-skinned Indians are originally Hans people or they call Heptalites. They were a Mongol people. All right, let's move on. This is the Darial Bass before they built a military highway to this. So this is exactly a little iron bridge built by Russian Empire. It's where a, it's where Dulgarnain Rahim Allah built his dam barrier, his wall barrier. You can see over here. You can see how rough the edge of the mountain it is. You can see all of this. This land, you can see this mountain range cliff has been disturbed. You can see this all lion stuff. And someday, inshallah, if we can get big metal detectors, we can we can recover some irons on the ground. Okay, this is the 20 recently 2015 Darial Bass. You can see. I'm actually uh, I'm demonstrating over here. You can see the 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 disturbance of the rock. This rock has been carved out. You can see that. You know, yeah. you don't have to be a ge uh, geological expert to get recognize this. <laughs> and this the other side. And yeah. you can see this is the river track. See, this is where he built the uh, malted cover. You can see over here. It's clear. It's clear. Inshallah ta'ala. Okay, okay, moving on. And this is the another illustration and an, an illustration of what iron wall with copper may look like. This is I'm showing this so people can see that this is the iron wall. I I this I downloaded from internet and I want to show that it's iron wall. Iron wall is for a stronger wall, nobody can break it. But remember also that this wall built by the had miracle of Allah in it. So only Allah could could let be uh, destroyed or ruined anytime he wants. Otherwise, Yajiju and Majiju were not able. So actually, so as you can see, this is the cover, yellowish stuff is a cover. The cover was made into the base of the uh, of the iron wall because there is there is water in it. You can see this water in it. If you if you put any if you build anything with iron on the water this water where, you know, raging water, if you build anything iron with it, it will rust within a couple hundred years. Actually, actually within decades, maybe 40 years, 50 years, and within 100 years, it will, it will be gone. But if you put a copper, water cannot uh, cannot do any destruction or any ruin of the copper. Yeah. So yeah. basically, that's the reason. I'm just depicting or illustrating, you know, to show you how the wall was look like. Okay. Moving on, in 10th century, another powerful Yajuju Majud show up from nowhere in Estebe. Estebe, like I said, in Estebe, that very grassland from Pacific Ocean all the way to west of Black Sea. So another another uh, another description of Yajuju Majud I learned is Yajuju Majud are actually fitna from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Whenever Allah wants, they they will come from. They will just show up from nowhere. So these people are, I don't know, but they're totally fitna from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah, uh, 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 may Allah and have okay. mercy on us. Yes. So basically, uh, it's the way. Okay, this tribe was called the Hanis. These people were the Hanis. Okay, they call them Hunic people. Uh, even early Chinese called them Shunu people. They were a people living that time, what's Mongolian now. So they were see also, they had a connection to Sitian because they were occupied the Ariel Bas area, the original homeland of Sitians. And the part of it, they were Turkic and also Mongol, uh, Mongol tribal confederation. So another thing that you can always tell Yajuju Maju is that you don't see one single tribe of Yajuju Maju moving its own. You, you always see them 10, 20, 40, 50, even 100 tribes of different ethnicity that coming together. But the rulers are always Yajuju Maju because that's what they do, destruction and killing. Oh, very, okay, uh, this numerical tribe is where they call the Gog and Magog by Romanists. The Romanists that time, remember, this is the before Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah, this is the before Allah sent the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So 
those early Christians, some of them were Muminin, because Allah remembers, subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, minhum al Muminin wa atharahum fasiqun. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are believers among them. So the, so the Romans and other Christians at that time, they called them Yajuju Majuju or Gogon Magag. Uh, their leader was Attila the Han. He was the most uh, genocidal despot that killed the millions. The Han uh, couldn't break barriers, so instead they attacked the Europe and Roman Empire from north. As Quran said, Gogon Magog always corrupted the earth and killed so many people, so many people. Okay, uh, continue. There were also many uh, Juju Maju tribes which joined Attila's hand. Okay, now, now this is the, another big secret I'm going to show you today, inshallah ta'ala. If you can recognize all these tribes, you will be amazed how connection they have up to this day. Okay, the first tribe, Attila's Han, is they had so many alliance uh, or, you know, confederation of tribes. The first one, the first ones were gods. Gods were the closest city and we had at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were blue eyes, uh, very belly skin, red hair. And most Europeans up to this up to this day were a descendant of gods. For example, after Attila was uh, defeated, they divided the gods to Western gods as the Western gods and Eastern gods. Okay, Eastern gods, they call Ostrogods, Ostrogods. Ostrogods is actually what I found, I found a book in 1900 where they call Osteria, Ostrogods. So you can see that Osteria is a German name, it means Eastern something, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Eastern gods, it's a Eastern gods, and it's been were occupied by Western gods. So, and another tribe was Alanis. This is amazing tribe. Alanis were, part of city and tribes that were occupied exactly the location of uh, uh, Daryal uh, Baz, where the was built his uh, barrier wall. This tribe exactly occupied that area. And that area, they used to call that area Brazilis, Brazilis. And at the time of Attila Dahan, they, they moved all the way to the Spain and Portugal, you know, Iberian Peninsula. That's where they went. That's where the Muslim Khilafat Umayyad uh, defeated them. But after, in 15th century, after they defeated the Umayyad uh, Khilafat in, in, in Andalusia, hey, yes, th yes this, uh, this Alan tribes then overtook Portugal. After they overtook Portugal, they also found a new world through Christopher Columbus. So the Portuguese got their share in new world in Brazil. Brazil. The, the Spanish portion, they cut off small states like Mexico, Venezuela, all of these many states. But the uh, Portuguese portion of the land, they did not divide it up. They keep that as one land. And strangely, do you know what they call it, that land? Brazilian. Their original homeland name. I found this information, that book written by uh, Dan Luke, where he talked about a lot of Alanis and their original homeland of that area in Black Sea areas. And another one were Alfaris. Alfaris were the Turkic people. Another one is Bulgaris. Bulgaris were a very famous warlike tribes of Yajuj Majuj, and it's the current people we, or nation we call Bulgaria. Another one were uh, Hungarian tribes. Although their original name was Magyar, this is what they call it because Hungarian is contained of between Han tribes and Magyaris. They call Hungarians. Bashkiris were people, Southern Russia, all of this you can see. Portis, Savirov, okay, here's another one. Uyghurs, they are Muslims now, mashallah, may Allah save them from China. Uh, Uyghurs are Muslims, but they're original part of Yajiju Majuj. There was another called Saragurus. Saragurus is, that, were, is that one of the reasons that they're being persecuted, that they're not Chinese or kind of like outside? Yes, yes. I believe I believe they have been persecuted because they became Muslims. Because Oriental, Yajuju, yeah, Majuj are all either uh, Buddhism or communism. We'll talk about it later. Even the largest ethnic Jainists, which is like 90, 95% of Jainists, are one single ethnic called uh, Hanis. 
So instead of H-U-N, Chinese call themselves it's H-A-N. Actually, they are very related to Hanis. So they are Yajuj Majuj. And actually, in my opinion, oh, so the Hans of the Chinese are related to the Hans of Yan. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I can show you. I can prove it. I can prove yeah. it that no, no doubt about it. The only difference is this vowel U and A. That's all. They same people. And actually, Chinese Hans or communist China are the one Yajuj Majuj that will attack Prophet Isa because Alayhi Salam, Alayhi Salam Prophet Isa, he will kill their ally, the Jal. Because uh, remember, Allah told us in Quran Subhanahu wa Taala, "Wa inna min kulli ahl al kitabi la yuminnahu min qabl mauti." All the al kitab people, whether they are Jews or Christian, will believe in Prophet Isa before he die. So there is no reason the al kitab people to attack Prophet Isa, alayhi salam. So remember, I'm talking about the Jews, the Jews that are current Christian or Judaism. They will not attack Prophet Isa, alayhi salam, because they are al kitab. They're going to believe him. They're going to believe him. But the Jainis have no religion. They are communists. They are, I'm talking about this tribe. They are uh, they're atheists, actually, atheists. They left even uh, Buddhism, what they were used to be. So after they became uh, atheism, although they are a good friend of right now in Israel, and Yaju and, and uh, Dajjal is, will be king of Israel. Remember that. So after Prophet Isa alayhi salam killed, killed the Dajjal, they will get mad because he killed their king. And before that, they will kill a lot of people. I don't know if you can say that, but as you know, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the fires to them, a little uh, mosquito-like animal will nag their bite. That's, that's, the, that's the fires. Remember, I don't know if you can say that, but current fires stuff, Shaga, uh, again we are in, it's made in Wuhan, China. They are the one who introduced this virus. They will kill the majority of humans through virus. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so uh, there were also many Yajuju Maju tribes which joined Attila Hanis, such as gods, like I said, all the way to, let's say, uh, let's say, uh, okay, Bashingas were uh, Guzi, remember, the tribe of Guzi were ancestors of uh, uh, Seljuk, Turkish, and Ottoman Empire. So, Sultan Usman actually is the direct descendant of Guzi. So, and also Khazaris. Khazar at that time, they did not call themselves Khazaris. They called that time Akiziri. We'll talk uh, Khazaris later. Another, another description of Yajuj, Yajuj, they always hide their identity. For example, for example, when Khazaris went to Israel, they called themselves Israelis. When gods uh, occupy, attack and uh, what's now British, and, uh, British island, Back in seventh century, there were three tribes. First, they uh, call uh, Angolo, Angolo. Second one called Saxonis. Third one called Jews. These tribes, two were Southern and Scandinavia. They were gods. Yajuju, Majuj, man. I'm telling you, it's real. And another one from Germany, Saxonis were Yajuju, Majuj. What they did after they became, uh, after they invaded Britain, they called themselves British. How convenient is that? Okay, moving on. This is the depiction of Hannes. They were very like warlike. Actually, this picture was made by, by one of the ancient Roman artists. It has been discovered and repainted again. You can see that they're scorching the earth. They're burning everything in front of them. Okay. Remember earlier when it's told you that there were some Persian elements in Pakistan and India and Afghanistan with the uh, Hanis. This is where Hanis originally, uh, this is where they're from. There was another Yajuj Umaju tribe which attacked what's now Iran, India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Their name was Heptalites, or they used to call them White Hanis, as they called them. You can see they're from Mongolia area, you know, Manchuria area, Southern Russia right now. So they occupy India as a Heptalite. They attack Persia, where they, uh, I mean, this into uh, into Pakistan areas, they rule. That's where you get the idea of Aryan Indians with their original Scythian, with their origin, original Macedonian uh, Alexander the Great army. This is where you get Aryan, Aryan people together. They are Yajuju Majuj 100%, although Macedonians were not, but their most armies were Yajuju Majuj. So this is where you get uh, discrimination caste system. This is the people who brought that system before India. 
India was 100% the native Indians. So, and also Persia, all kind of stuff. So, and you can see the Hans also attacked Europe, where they call now Hungary. That's uh, what they did too. Okay, after the death of Attila, the Hunic, uh, after, okay, after the death of Attila, the Hunic Empire came to an end. Uh, but, as any, but as an empire of Yajuju, Yajuju becomes history, another takes its place. Okay, here's another one. It's called Huran. Huran were a very big Mongol Turkic empire in what's now is today, like uh, Kyrgyz, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, all that area, empire. That empire was, okay, my, okay, empire took over many tribes in the East. Then after that, Gok Turkis, Gok Turkis, remember that name, Gok Turkis empire uh, took over everything. At the time, we come into, we come into now the reason I would do in the presentation to show that the Hazaris and Gok Turks were, were, were one, one who broke the barrier. At that time, the, Khaz, uh, the Khazaris were a part of Gok Turks. Khazar Empire got its Khazar Empire got its root in the East. According to D. M. Dunlop, the former history professor of Columbia University, United States, although he was a British guy, and author of the history of the Jewish Khazaris, the Khazar people or Khazaris were originated from Khidarites. Okay, Kidarites were another Kidarites were another tribe of Yajuju Majuj, part of the one I show you previous slide of Heptalites or White Hines. So basically, these people were a Hunic people or Turkic Mongol people. That's where they really originate. And they also and also they were also related to the people who we call today Uyghurs. They were the same people. Also, it kept Jenja a lot. You know, people we call Turkics and actually bridge that connector between Majuj in the East and the Majuj in the East. Means Oriental Majuj so wait, in the uh, East. You got a little bit cut off. So you're saying the uh, the Turks are in between the Chinese and the white? Are the bridge. Are the uh, connector they're, or... They're the bridge. Okay. Yeah, the bridge between... Uh, yeah, Jewish is the West. Uh, or the Old West and... Uh, you know, the Islamics, the, the Khazar, all this, and the East, all this, all, all this tribe. So, Turkey is very, it's very, uh, position, it's extremely strange because in 500 years, they can be Asiat looking people, Oriental looking people. In the next 500 years, they can be 100% Arianic, European, blue eyes, uh, you know, European looking people, so the bridge. They can, be, they, they can be Oriental people or they can become European anytime. Okay, moving on. So the Ghazaris were originated from Kitarites or White Hanis. Also the ruling elite, they had ruling elite, which always no matter what had, uh, very skin, very white skin, red hair and blue eye, were Sitianis. And this clan, actually their name was Ashkenaz, that's we're talking about Bill Gates. Ashkenaz people were always red hair, ruling glass of within the Khazar area. Because Khazar Empire, they had dozen and dozen of tribal connection, uh, tribal confederation, different tribes. Anybody that accepted their rulership was part of the tribe. So basically, there is an Arab guy called Ahmed ibn Fadlan, who was a 10th century Arab Muslim traveler. Who, who visited the Bulgaris, who told at that time Khalif of Muslims in Baghdad that they became Muslims and they were scholars and all kinds of stuff. So he took a larger convoy of what they say, like some corner, like 5,000 or more than of horses, men and all kinds of stuff, camels. So he went to the, although he did not go ex, uh, directly to the Khazar land, but he went uh, to close in tribes or part of Khazaria. And he's the man who give us the information that these people are the people of Yajuju Majuj. You can look to up. Uh, uh, and Ahmed Ibn Fadlan traveled to the, uh, to the, to the, to the, what they call it, the, to the uh, Folk River. That's where the Bulgars that time lived before they moved to what's now Bulgaria. So, uh, 
he called uh, Kaiser tribes host of Yajuju Majuj after he visited Northern Caucasus in 10th century. Moving on. Okay, this is the Kaiser Empire in 6th century. Uh, take a look at the geographical area. Geographical location are very similar to Scythia. You can see that this is the Caspian Sea, Black Sea between. You can see that. So you can say in sense of the related Scythians, their ruling were actually Scythians, white Europeans, blue whites, but they they call themselves Yajuju uh, Majuj. Even a lot of people believe that the name Jew actually is a is a Yajuju Majuj tribes actually. Their names are Ya, yeah, and another tribe name is Ma. So their last name is a, the, the name, this name, you can see that, you know, so they're yeah, related. Ma, so that's the, yes. Their, 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 their last name, their, their father's name is a, is a judge, is a, is a judge, judge. So one is Ya, and one is Ya. Yeah. And if you go to Israel newspapers today, there are so many newspapers called Yanet News. You can find the Yanet News. There is another one called Manet News. You, same tribes over here always. Okay, moving on. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described Yajuju Majuj as being well built and having red hair. Remember what I was talking about, yes. Saiti and Anhanis. Small, Small eyes. eyes. Yeah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam describing two group of people. Oriental Yajuju Majuj and European Yajuju Majuj. You can take from this hadith everything about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's actually described in Yajuju Majuj. So uh, small eyes and wide, flat, uh, flat, like shield faces. That's a Sahih al uh, Hadith Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, who say that. Okay, moving on. Uh, there is no mystery about these people. They are the descendants of, of Jabed, Yafis in Arabic. In both Oriental, Turkish, Mongols, and red haired Europeans, those are Yajuju Majuj. Yajuju Majuj are not hidden somewhere in the ground. They are always with us from the beginning of the history to the end. Remember, I just told you that a few minutes ago, uh, the Hamitic were a first civilization. Most of them were destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second Empire were a Semitic uh, civilization, starting in Israel all the way to. Abbas died in 10th century. Uh, also, they're gone. So from 10th century up to the all the way to the end of the world, it will be a Juju Majuj time. You can you can see the history. No any other ethnic groups that rules that rules on in the world today. Everything is a Juju Majuj. They corrupted, and the uh, the jail it's going to be their king. So basically, that's what they are. They're not here and somewhere in the ground. They were always with us from the beginning of history to the end. In fact, they are ruling humanists since the 14th century. That's exactly when Umar, Umar and then Umar White in Andalusia were defeated. And at the same time, the Abbasid in Baghdad were defeated by the Turks. So, so although, like I say, it doesn't matter whether you, whether if your grandfather or ancestors were Yajuj or Majuj, the matter is to be yourself. So since 90% of Turkish people are Muslims, we're going to take them as good Muslims. So since the 14th century, Muslims ruled by Yajuj or Majuj, who are Muslims. Christians ruled by Yajuj or Majuj, who are become Christians. And remember, the old world of Roman Latin people, they were destroyed. You can't even find the Latin language. Any country does, you know, it's, it's all gone. Um, there are some countries using Latin language like French, but the France, they're not the same people. The people are Franks. Franks were Germanic tribes that were a part of Goths, Saitian, Yajuju, Majuj. But since the French language, which is Latin or Rome, one of the Roman language, they were, they were well, well established, they couldn't destroy. So they took their language anyway, but they give the country their names, Frank, Franks, you know. Okay, the current Anglo-American with their Ashkenazi Kaiser are part of Yajuju Majuj. The three tribes which invaded Britain in seventh century were in, their names were Anglo, Saxonist, Jews, were from south of Scandinavia. In fact, Anglo and Jews from what's now Denmark. Okay. And uh, North Germany, another tribe uh, came from Saxonist, it's from North Germany, who are the gods. And remember that. The medieval Arab writers, 
they call pharyngeans 100% here juju majuju so pharyngeans you cannot find any nation today called pharyngeans but you can find that their descendants the first the most famous pharyngean people you know who, who, who they are they are harshians it's called who's they are the one who fighting kesar and the one, one who destroy kesar empire so the who's are part of pharyngeans yajuju majuju Viking, 100% Yajuju Majuj because they're from Fringians. Who's were Swiss people or Viking? They all, and you can see that the people who call today English are actually Viking. They're from Scandinavia. All of them Yajuju Majuj. So all of them are another Gog and Magog tribes in history. Okay. Uh, this is the, okay, the tribes, the three tribes which invaded Britain in 7th century, Anglo Saxonist Jews were from south of Scandinavia and north Germany were Goths. They all were, were Goths and Fringian and Fringian's origin. Another Yajuju Majuj uh, tribe. Okay, you can see over here Jews from what's now Denmark, north Denmark, Denmark, Angles from south of Denmark, Saxon is from northern Germany. Even there is another tribe called Frisian up to this now, they're very minority, minority in, uh, in Holland, actually, their language, Frisian, is closest to the English language. So they were relative. If you see somebody speaking Frisian, you can tell, you cannot tell if this is English or not. And they took the name Britannis. They were not Britain. They were Scandinavian uh, gods and Frisian. Yeah, Majuj. Okay, we come into conclusion, inshallah. So we're gonna answer now who broke the barrier wall, built by Idul Harnain. Before we answer, let's uh, see this hadith narrated by Sayyidina bint, uh, bint al-Jahash, Umm al-Mu'mineen, or mother of believers. Uh, Sayyidina said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once he came to her in a state of fear. Everybody knows her, but I'm just reading so you can see. Yes, yes, no, that's her fine. In his, yes, in a state of fear and said, no one has the right to be worshipped but Allah. Woe unto the Arabs from danger that has come to near. That has, that has come near. An opening has been made in the wall of Gog and Magog, Yajuju Majud, like this. So uh, making a circle with his thumb and index finger is like this. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying like this. Sayyidina bin Tujahas radiallahu anha said, Allah, Oh Allah Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, shall we, shall we be destroyed even though there are biased persons among us? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, naam. Rasulullah said, yes. And the, when it's going to be? When the evil person will increase. Absolutely, you can see that. I let the, I let the viewers decide that. You, it's, a, it's a bad time. Okay. And, okay, and this is the hadith. This hadith is the morning, actually. I found out this hadith. He was, in, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was in Mecca. But he woke up from sleep. And same hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas, remember, the cousin of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the Mufassirin of the Quran. Yes. He said, Allah always still uh, performed the tawaf around the Kaaba while riding his camel, his camel. And every time he reached the corner of the black stone, he pointed he pointed, he pointed at it with his hand and said, Allahu Akbar. Also, Sayyidina said, remember, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, an opening has been made in the wall of Gog and Magog, like this, like this, and this, performing, uh, performing 90 degrees with his thumb and, in the, okay, and index finger. Okay, mashallah. So this is where my investigation began. In, so Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the seventh year of Hijriya, the month of the Lugada, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Mecca doing Umrah. And this is the, after the treaty of, excuse me, after the treaty of Hudaybiyah, uh, remember, when the Allah Prophet came sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So previous year was 6 Hijriya, this year is uh, 7 Hijriya. Remember, Hijriya started when this Miladiyah or European uh, calendar or Gregorian was 622. So, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying the wall of Yajuju Majuju has been opening like this today, that was live events. So I found through the history books what happened in 629. 
in caucus area since i always believed the, the saying of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam see brother is brother and sister is shah umar i found out one thing that if you really come if you show good heart to allah and ask allah for ilm he will show you the true light true nur so i i want to find the history what happened 629 okay since uh dul qada is 11 month of months 629 when he, when when i did the calendar uh, conversion it's actually spring of 629 so i was searching many years it took me a couple of years to find out what really happened in the mock in the caucasus southern caucasus area around the georgia armenia that area 629 spring of 629 what happened so strangely allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show me this you're not going to believe it. most of people don't even believe this but uh, it's so amazing it's so amazing okay from that hadith we can conclude we can conclude a permanent opening had been made to the barrier wall so the question is who and and which yajuj or majuj tribe that broke the barrier wall okay this is where i found the strangely in the month of dul qada remember dul qada is 11 month of the muslim calendar our our calendar on the 7th year of hijriya or uh, gregory or european calendar was 629 ad prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in mecca doing umrah so when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was saying the wall has been breached or broke or broke there was actual life going on life military activity going on at the deriel base area what happened at the same at the same month when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was saying this hadith the kaiser army with go turkis consisting of 40000 strong military broke the barrier wall well crossing the the barrier wall the barrier base on their way to assist the emperor heraclius the byzantine emperor who was who was at war with sasanian empire the persian actually the, the same this and uh, this byzantium heraclius he was at war with the persian king this persian king is the one of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent a letter asking to uh, to become muslims and he got arrogant and he sent a man and he said you know the sira so basically yeah. so basically this is the same king that his son killed so after he had a judge with the kaiser and go turks broke the, this barrier they invaded uh, georgia and armenia they kill everybody they can they kill everyone you can check history there is chapter of uh, the book i'm going to show you so they okay with he was war with the, in uh, persia in the spring of 629 in armenia so after they invaded in armenia they kill everybody they even hang everybody children and women and they 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 rape they pillage they they murder okay so basically i found this amazing information in the book written by douglas morton dunlop you can see the first chapter he talking about how kaiser empire with cook turkis cross the derial base and kill everybody in south caucasus same people to learn built against it in history so uh, and uh, this guy was this writer was he was a renowned british orientalist orientalist and scholar of islamic and eurasian history and this is his book this is his book it called the history of jewish kaiser by dm Dun, uh, dunlop you can read if you read this book wallahi you will be amazed at what a more information islamic information you can find it he didn't know that some people uh may use to solve a mystery of yajuj majuj and the who broke the wall but he put the information anyway also arthur arthur kessler's book 13 tribes there are there are wealth of information about the yajuj majuj and kaiser all you can find it so and this is the calendar uh, conversion id gregory it was mars uh, it was early spring of 629 it's it comes to the lugaada 11 month 27 each area seven you can see seven the year so basically it matches everything it matches everything so brother that's the research i make i hope inshallah ta'ala and people will see it and you know and and, and maybe believe it because uh, and the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam anything the prophet said it's a hak it's a truth but because our limited 
understanding unlimited thinking we overlook and we underlook and we don't clearly see how uh, and and our ulama our ulama basically got lost to this you know uh, i watched one of your video talking about uh uh Sheikh Yazid Ghardi actually he said something <laughs> subhanallah subhanallah he said this mystery yajuj majuj some people leave to islam subhanallah subhanallah i don't know have phd i'm just a normal person i study it with the help of allah and i came to the conclusion yajuj majuj brothers and sisters are real they were released by by the time of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and inshallah if we have another time i can explain you every hadith of yajuj majuj where prophet Describe them and talk about that. It makes sense. Everyone, even one, one brother. Before I go, sorry, I took a lot of time. Even one hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he said, "Ya Jiju, Ya Jiju." Every day, they dig the wall. They trying to break in. You know that hadith. And and they will say their leader say, "Okay, today is enough. We come back tomorrow." And then when they come back uh, next day, it's same thing because it's a miracle built, built in wall. Then one day they will say. Uh, their, their leader will say, "Okay, you guys, let's go home. Inshallah, we'll do. We'll finish off tomorrow." And then we, when they come back, it's actually is as they stayed as they left the previous day. So I found that this hadith to be truthful because when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this hadith, he did not have the information that the 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 the, 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 the barrier wall has been breached. So Prophet only told us whatever Allah told him, al wahi This is truth. So. I also found another strange ayah in Surah Al-Kaf. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala said, "Wala taqulu inni fa'ilun dhalika ghadan illa ya sha Allah." Don't say I'm going to do this tomorrow until Allah uh, Allah willing, God willing inshallah. So I found this very strange because I thought maybe ulama of Israel in Medina took this knowledge of permission from Allah to the Khazar since they give the Jews many way and they said, "Hey you guys, if you go to the wall and say inshallah you're going to break it so i don't know that I, i haven't found any clear knowledge about this but it may be true it may be true so that's my presentation brother thank you very much i appreciate your help thank you and so inshallah much. i hope you understand that was really awesome this is a historical conversation in my set of youtubes this is because this uh the especially uh the last part where you mentioned the hadith and the date and how it all synchronizes it all coincides uh together mashallah may Allah bless you and reward you in dunya and akhirah for this inshallah and inshallah Amen, we'll definitely be doing another program uh, inshallah 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 yeah. brother assalamu alaikum uh, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah talk to you later inshallah yes if you can un unshare the screen so i can yes, yes inshallah Thank you brother Abdul Rahman inshallah we'll have you again inshallah inshallah brother wallahi i appreciate the invitation inshallah we'll talk later assalamu alaikum